Okay, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Hot Marriage, Cool Parents. This is Douglas Hayner, joined by no one. But we do have a fantastic surprise guest today, which is going to be my brother, who is going to share some inside family information about how the family felt and how my brother felt about me coming to them and telling them that I'm going to be on a TV show. Oh yeah, and I'm getting married. So Matt's going to walk us through, that's my brother Matt, he's going to walk us through the thought process on their end, what happened when I first told them I was going to get married, um, how they felt about Jamie in the beginning, and then obviously going through until now. Um, It's so good to be back in New Jersey. I can't tell you, even though our house is a disaster, and I feel like we haven't really gotten a chance to spend time at our house here in New Jersey, just because we got home, we spent a day in our house, and then Jamie and I flew out to LA to film a clip show for Married at First Sight. I am podcasting right now in my kitchen because Jamie is also out in LA now filming for Unfiltered. So Henley is behind me. Hendrix is asleep. You're probably going to hear Henley right now. Wait, what'd you say? I drank all of it. No, but what'd you say? You saw what? I saw a few cars. That's what you had to tell me? Mm-hmm. Why did you have to tell me that now? Because I need to. Because I wasn't paying attention to you? No. Talk. <laughs> All right. Henley is going to be going to bed soon. So she is watching Octonauts. That's her favorite right now. Before, every day was Beauty and the Beast. Then every day was Frozen. Then every day was Moana. Now everything is Octonauts. How it transitioned to that, I don't know. How she found Octonauts, I don't know. But getting back to having our guest today, I do want to give a couple little blips or heads up. So I recorded the interview before I'm doing this. And again, I'm by myself at home with both kids. And I tried to time it out to where Hendrix would be in bed, Henley would be occupied, and I'd have my brother on. uh, We use this new Riverside, which is a phenomenal. I don't know if you guys have noticed the sound quality when we have guests on. But it's a new platform that we are using to do our interviews, and it sounds fantastic. So as we're going through and recording, as soon as we start, Hendrix wakes up. So I ask my brother, listen, Matt, just go. Just tell the story. Here's what I want you to talk about. Tell the story. I have to go up and get Hendrix and then bring him down. So when I went to go get Hendrix, Matt's telling his story. So I really don't know what he said, but... Hendrix wakes up and has the biggest dump in his diaper ever. So not only do I have to go upstairs, Matt, my brother, only has 45 minutes because he's having company over. So we were rushing through everything. And I feel like our whole life is just one big rush from one thing to the next because that's what it feels like. Even with this just speaking, kind of rushing through us being in New Jersey, having to fly out to LA, coming back. Jamie has to fly back out to LA to do unfiltered and I'm home and I'll be home for a while, which is great. But we do have to go back to Florida to help get things done with the house there because we just ran out of time. But anyway, Hendrix is now awake and we're trying to go through everything. I was trying to get them occupied and and keep them occupied as my brother was telling a story. So you will hear Hendrix, Henley, maybe some background noise, but also as we were going through the conversation and towards the end, All of a sudden, we have thunderstorms here in New Jersey. So now there's thunder and our power goes out for a hot minute and everything froze. So that's part of part of the interview today. And I just wanted to give you that heads up in case the quality and everything else is just not consistent. So that's all. But we like to be very transparent here. So um, that's what's happening. I do want to mention a couple of things, too. If you're new listening or if you haven't done this yet, first of all, uh, Jamie and I love your five-star reviews. We love all the reviews that we get because it's really the only way that we have interaction with you through the podcast and being able to get your feedback is really instrumental in how we proceed with guests and everything else. But we wanted to try something new and start to put some of your screen names to your voices and hopefully maybe even eventually faces. But 
we wanted to try something new where you guys can send in a voice memo and you can send a voice memo just right from your phone. Ask us any question that you want. There is no question that is off the table. If it wants to be about bachelor, if you want it to be about married at first sight or just life or parenting or really anything in general, send us a voice memo. We're going to start picking some at random to incorporate them into the episode and then have a dialogue about it. So you can take a voice memo from your phone and email it to teamjamie at jamieotis.com. So voice memo, email it to teamjamie at jamieotis.com. And we want to start having your voices and some of your questions and answer some of your questions, but uh, also have you on the podcast. And speaking about five-star reviews, this one is from... Hem. I think that's it. Hem. Uh, star Hem. Yeah. They say episode 121 about Dr. Gertrude. Thank you for being so open and honest about you and Doug's relationship. It's nice to know that other couples go through issues also in a marriage and everything is not always rainbows and butterflies. And it really hasn't been. But thank you for that review. Thank you for reaching out. Um, yeah, we had a, a rough go there for a, a little bit, to say the least. I made the transition to becoming a stay-at-home dad to make things easier, and it only seemed to heighten the stress. You know, I've never aspired to be a stay-at-home dad. I never thought of being a stay-at-home dad. I didn't ask to be a stay-at-home dad. But I am very, very lucky and very fortunate that I do have the opportunity to be home and be with the kids and be able to be present and be around instead of just having to check out and go to work or just be on the computer, which I was totally fine with. But fortunately, Jamie has a business that is thriving and it just made more sense for me to be a stay-at-home dad, focus on the podcast, focus on YouTube. And plus we still do shoot for couples cam, which is coming back on on Lifetime. I think it's going to be Wednesday nights, but that's always fun. And we get to film everything in our home and it's great. But yeah, the whole stay-at-home dad thing was a new concept to me. Um, when we first decided on it, Jamie had a talk with her therapist and you know she said, you know, you have to kind of identify responsibilities. And one of the things that I had a struggle with and just the thought of saying, okay, well, if Jamie's going to be super busy and through work and email and everything else, if I'm watching the kids or if I'm, you know, keeping the kids away from her so she can get that work done, plus doing things around the house and doing anything else that I need, is that going to be seen as the same effort or the same work percentage, if there is a percentage, as what she's doing? And the therapist even said, you know, you have to see that as equal. You have to see that the only reason why you're able to get your job done is because, you know, your husband is with the kids or if your your wife is with the kids. And, you know, that was always kind of a foreign concept to me. And, and just maybe it's a whole male-female thing. I don't know. Just because, it, you know, I have friends and family that are stay-at-home moms and, you know, it's always seen as equal, but I don't know anybody else that's a stay-at-home dad. I'm the first stay-at-home dad that I've ever met, which is great. And it's, you know, I mean, a lot of people are being stay-at-home now anyway, because if you can work from home, then you're pretty much at home, but it's not the same. You have to check out and everything. So there's a lot that Jamie and I had to work through and get through. And it was a lot of stress and and Jamie's work picked up and she seemed to get even busier. And the whole idea of me being home was supposed to free up time and to be happier and to, you know, be at home with the kids and, and everything else. But Jamie had less and less time with us and less and less time with the kids. And it, it just wasn't her idea of me becoming a stay at home dad to make things easier. Just, it just everything just became hectic. And thankfully we worked through it. Thankfully we have a phenomenal couples therapist that we see that really put things in perspective. You know, one of the things that Jamie had struggled with, and this is going on through pretty much most of our relationship was intimacy. As a guy, I don't know if it's just guys in general, but for me personally, I can't speak on behalf of all guys, but for me personally, I am always ready. And by ready, I mean I can always be turned on. And Jamie doesn't have that switch. And 
one of the things that our therapist recommended was the seven love languages. There's a book out there about the love languages, and it really broke it down to what is a turn on and what speaks love and intimacy. And we've started to really work that into our lives. You know, for for Jamie, it's more acts of service, me doing things, a lot of things where she doesn't have to ask, doing things that are just nice. And, and you know, a lot of that me leaving notes for her or, you know, me knowing that she has to mail something out and me already just mailing it out. Like those are things that just speak to Jamie and that turn Jamie on. And for me, it's physical touch, um, you know, hand holding, cuddling like those. And just like that, that's what my love language is. It's a lot of touching and being close and intimate. That's my intimacy language for Jamie. Like I said, acts of service and, I think once we started to do that, things have really picked up. And for anybody that does have intimacy issues or things like that, I'm going to recommend that book because it really did help us out and it really got us both on the same wavelength. And it even helped out just with day-to-day stuff, you know, because if you have intimacy issues, when you start to think of, okay, well, how do we fix this? And if you're not going to go see a therapist or a couples therapist, this is one of the ways. And this is one way to get on the same page because... Jamie and I never really sat down at a dinner table and talked about intimacy or talked about turn-ons and this. And I mean, we would graze the surface of those things, but we never really dove into exactly what gets us there. And this book did great. Our therapist is great. She really helped us through a tough time. And I'm very happy to say that that Jamie and I are on the up and ups. And, and I think we're really starting to speak the same language now. Um, We're both getting on the same page. My role as a stay-at-home dad has become a little bit more defined, helping out with her business, helping out with the house. It's just chaotic. It's absolutely chaotic. A couple things that happened over the last couple weeks. One, I want to say rest in peace and, and happy birthday to our baby boy in heaven, Jonathan. His birthday had just passed. In fact, I was happy that we were home in New Jersey for it because we planted a tree out front and we put a little uh, stepping stone on there with his initials. And that's something that we recognize every year. Jamie, even around Christmas time, she'll donate a gift, a toy for another boy that would be his age at that time. You know, and I don't know if anybody had followed us from that early on, but when we were first pregnant, we were the first married at first sight couple to announce a pregnancy. And we announced it on Hoda and Kathy Lee, which was great. And Jamie looked great. We were on and they made the announcement. They gave us a a gift and Jamie was showing and, and everything was great. Literally the very next day or a couple days later, we had a doctor appointment that said that there is no chance for our son to survive this pregnancy. And it was way too early for us to be able to have him. And unfortunately, we lost our firstborn, Jonathan, and that was really tough. Um, We did get a chance to hold him. And, you know, it was unexpected. It was, I mean, that wasn't what we went and prepared for that day. And surprising to me, it was this perfectly formed or starting to form of a baby. You can see five toes. You can see a penis and testicles. There was really no skin over him. And he was probably, if I put both hands together, um, that's kind of how tall he was. Uh, So very little, but, you know, it gave us a chance to say hello and goodbye and, I'll never get that image out of my head. Um, and it's a terrible memory, but it's also, we got a chance to say goodbye. Uh, we got a chance to hold him for a second and then say goodbye and be able to see. And and that's just always going to be with us. But that's why we celebrate Jonathan's birthday each and every year when he was supposed to be born, because, you know, he's always going to be with us. And, you know, so that was something that we did. And we always have a little, not not so much of a get together, but we always do recognize Jonathan and usually do something on that day. But uh, on a lighter note, this past week was Henley and Hendrix's very first day in New Jersey school. This was the first day Hendrix was in school ever, 
which is great because now that we're here and now that we're home, it's really going to give us a lot of time to get all of our work done that we need to during the day and be able to spend evenings as a family, which we really didn't get a chance to. We always had something to do. I'm just looking forward to getting back into a routine and for Hendrix to socialize and be with other kids and be with other adults or teachers and just to be able to have that because he didn't really have that in Florida. But we go to take Henley and Hendrix to school and Hendrix is probably one of the sweetest things I've ever seen. We put Hendrix down and Henley immediately grabs, Henley's been at this school before. Henley immediately grabs his hand and starts walking him into the school. Like she knows the place. And thankfully there was a couple of the same teachers from when Henley went there last year. And Hendrix goes right in and it was almost like he just gave us a hello and goodbye and just walked in, no crying or nothing. And I remember when Henley first went to school and when I first dropped her off, her crying um, and kind of reaching back for me just because she was going to miss him. Plus she's, you know, in with strangers and uh, it's a whole new thing. It was weird not getting that from Hendrix and maybe because Henley was there, but you know, we passed Hendrix off for the first two, three days and no crying. He just goes right over. And normally he was very timid. Like even when he first saw my mom and dad, after us going to Florida, when they first saw him, he was a little hesitant and he would cry because they were new people to him. But now with the Facebook portal and we do FaceTime every day, even while we were in Florida, he recognized them and he knew them. And it was just such an easy transition. And it really, really warmed our hearts because we want them and Hendrix specifically to know his family and to be able to be with his grandma and grandpa and You know, my parents and Jamie's family, they're such a big part of our lives. And even with Henley, since we're in New Jersey, all of my family, they're such an important part. And, you know, Henley every day will say, let's talk to Gaga and Pop-Pop or I want to see my cousins. Let's go to see my cousins. And it was tough in Florida because, you know, we just couldn't say, okay, yeah, they're going to come by Uh, or, yeah, we can go over there after school or later. You know, now that we're home, it's been really great to see that. And Hendrix has the biggest smile ever when he sees my parents. He knows the teachers now in school after a couple days. And, you know, it's just, everything's been great so far. So I'm waiting for Jamie to get home from LA, which is going to be tomorrow. Or by the time this podcast comes out, that's when she's coming home. And I think we're going to be here. I think we're going to be in the house for the next week until we go up and see Jamie's side of the family up in New York. But Uh, I believe we're going to be getting this house ready to sell. Maybe. I don't know. Everything's a maybe in this life. Uh, But there's a lot of housework that needs to be done, which I'm going to get done. And I realize that I'm droning on way too long right now. So like I said before, my brother's going to be coming on and we get to chat with him about his thoughts and what he thought of Jamie, what he thought of Married at First Sight, and all the way through the process, maybe some embarrassing stories about me. But yeah, looking forward to that. So I think I'm going to get Matt on the phone right now. Well, actually, before we get to my brother, Matt, I do want to give a shout out to our sponsors this week. First being Ritual. And if you are a vitamin taker, prenatals, multivitamin, anything, or if you're looking to take vitamins, definitely check out Ritual. Ritual are these types of vitamins that you can take with or without food. Jamie's been taking the prenatal vitamins. I switched over to the multivitamins. And these things are absolutely packed with everything that you need. No shady extras. There's a lot of vitamins that are out there that have all these extra ingredients that you can't even pronounce. Ritual guarantees that the vitamins are vegan friendly and are all formulated with high quality nutrients and non-GMO, no major allergens, synthetic fillers, or artificial colorants. Jamie would always tell me that they made her more energetic. And of course the results may vary, but that's just what she noticed. And all the vitamins, they come with these special tablets that actually make the vitamins taste better. So it's not just like that fishy or vitamin taste. Mine was a little bit more pepperminty. Jamie's, I love the smell because it was really like a lemon. And the best part of all is the vitamins are literally shipped right to your door every single month with completely free shipping. Now it's also great because you can easily start snooze or cancel the vitamin subscription at any time. If for whatever reason you don't like ritual in that first month, they'll even refund your order. They think of the whole family when it comes to vitamins. So get key nutrients without all the BS visit ritual.com 
com backslash HMCP to start Ritual today and get 10% off your first three months. That's Ritual, R-I-T-U-A-L dot com backslash HMCP to get 10% off during your first three months. Ritual.com backslash HMCP, 10% off during your first three months. And next, we have a really cool sponsor, something that really helped Jamie and I out because now we're in two states. We have cars in two states and we have homes in two states. It's Gabby. So there are literally hundreds of companies out there that claim to compare auto and home insurance rates, but there's only one that actually does it, and that's Gabby. So with all of the moving that we've done and going back and forth, it's super important to check out the rates and to know the rates and based on the different states that you're at. And it's so easy. It's a website that you can literally compare insurance policies and rates. And it's the one true comparison platform with fast, verifiable quotes and not ballpark guesses. So you can literally compare your current coverage with 40 other top insurance providers like Progressive, Nationwide, Travelers, all in one place. And you can actually use your current insurance information to get started. It's absolutely free. They only show policies that are the same or better than your current coverage, which is amazing. And it's super easy just to log in, pop in your information, see what the rates are. And for us, it actually showed us that we were getting the best deals already, but it was really reassuring to know that because we didn't have time to compare all these different quotes. So most of Gabby customers save $961 per year on average, which is insane. And they will never, ever sell your information. So there won't be any annoying spam or robocalls. Check out Gabby's website today. Put your policy to the test like we did. Get better insurance with Gabby. It's totally free to check. And there's literally no obligation. So just go to Gabby, G-A-B-I dot com slash hot marriage. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash hot marriage. Check out Gabby. Check out your insurance. Compare your insurance. No obligation. It's free to check. Gabby.com slash hot marriage. Two great sponsors this week. This episode is brought to you by HP. Whenever you do your best thinking, the HP Spectre X360 is ready when inspiration strikes. With power save for battery life and focus mode to multitask, you can do your best thinking whenever and wherever it happens. You can't always schedule when and where you might have a brilliant thought, whether it's in the morning or before bed, when you're at your computer or away from it. Thinking can happen anywhere and anytime. The HP Spectre X360 2-in-1 Convertible PC with Windows 10 saves battery life for whenever an idea hits you. HP Spectre X360, a more thoughtful laptop. 20 years ago, the greatest gymnasts in the world gathered to compete for the ultimate prize, an Olympic gold medal. But in the midst of the competition, the gymnasts started falling and falling and falling and no one understood what was happening until one gymnast discovered why. I think we were just all in shock. No part of that was normal. I didn't even know that it could happen. This is Blind Landing, the story of one of the biggest mistakes in Olympic history. Listen to Blind Landing on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Let's get back and bring him on. For everybody or anybody that doesn't know, Matt Hayner, uh, who I have been related to for um, 34 years. 34 years. Can now. you believe that? Yeah. 34 years this July. Yeah. So Matt is my youngest brother. <laughs> and only growing up was, um, I would say, the youngest child. Yeah. The better, the better man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but some people do know you if they watch the show. Other people don't. But I yeah. figure I, I kind of wanted eating. to. What? I said I'm always <laughs> eating on the show. <laughs> that is true. But I wanted to get somewhat of your perspective on what your thoughts were when. I first came home and said that I was thinking about being on a TV show (laughs) and that they actually have a casting process and then I'm going to go through. And then I told you that I was going to get married. So I'm going to go get Hendrix, but can you just give us your perspective on how all of that started? Like start from the beginning, just like what were your thoughts when I first started? And then what were your thoughts as I was going through the process? I'm going to go get Hendrix. So just keep talking. Okay. You are. Hey, care. Hey, care. (laughs) You want me to talk without you being here? Yes. 
Oh, jeez. Just pretend like I'm listening to you. <laughs> um, so it was actually funny. We were literally with another couple today, and we were telling the story about how this all went down. So for anybody that knows Doug, this was not a shocker for anybody that he would be going on to a reality show. Now, when he came and uh, he told our parents and everything like that, we kind of took it as a uh, as a joke. Super Bon Bon, our, our mom, Bonnie, cried. Uh, then she quickly got over that. And now I think she likes the quote-unquote fame that came along with all this stuff. But she was super upset. Uh, we kind of got on board. And then, then again, I um, uh, admittedly so didn't take it as serious as, uh, as I probably should have. So when Doug started explaining to me, you know, the process and everything like that, I could see how serious he was about it, and uh, I guess that's when I started getting on board. And then the uh, the actual wedding was interesting. It was the one of the best, most awkward things I've ever been a part of. And coming from our hometown, Doug was a, a little bit of a, a hometown hero. So the fact that she thought he was ugly as a younger brother, that was just absolute music to my ears uh for somebody that i looked up to for so long um it was nice to hear that but uh it it was cool to meet jamie the experience was cool um i I think myself specifically was a little bit hesitant to get close to jamie at first um obviously now she's part of our family we love her it's you know awesome she's a phenomenal phenomenal person um, but me specifically, I was probably a little bit more guarded than the rest of the family when it came to their relationship and stuff like that. But as soon as, uh, I saw that they were getting serious and this was way before Henley and Hendrix and all of that stuff, you know, I, uh, slowly but surely came on board. This is super awkward, by the way. I don't know if people are listening right now or if this is recorded, but I'm literally sitting here talking to myself on the podcast thing. Why my brother goes and gets Hendrix. The whole process, though, was pretty crazy. The reality TV stuff and being mic'd up and all that stuff, it's kind of surreal. Some crazy moments, though. Do you have any thoughts on uh, Doug and Jamie uh, at the beginning of the process? Weird at first and awesome now. That's what Carrie, my wife, had to say. I love how Doug does this, by the way. He, he goes, yeah, be on my podcast, be on my podcast. <laughs> and then Hendrix wakes up. He asks me a question and then leaves. <laughs> So I'm just sitting here talking to myself on the freaking computer. I got done with my monologue two minutes ago. I have nothing more to say. I ran out of stuff. I love you all. I love my niece and nephew. So regardless of how this all worked out, we got them. Doug and Jamie seem to be taking over the world at this point, which is great. Super, super stoked for them. So I would say all in all, Married at First Sight was a success. You know? Kudos to Dr. Pepper. She's the only one I remember. I think the only one I met. Did you meet Dr. Pepper? Uh, Oh, that's right. So (laughs) I don't know if they could hear you, but and by they, I don't know who they is either. (laughs) So on the show, everybody gets like a very, very high level glimpse of my family and uh, or our family, I should say. And (laughs) <laughs> my mom and dad are ridiculous and what you see on tv is really not how we are they water us down pretty good so when doug was going through this process this lady <laughs> this lady uh dr pepper who was one of the uh the doctors <laughs> met us at this place called big ed's barbecue and she wants to see us act natural of uh what's up hendrix boy of course he takes the largest dump that i've ever had to oh i can imagine life. yeah zach pooped on the beach today really it was all sandy it was the worst yeah, a, so i went on a whole off? <laughs> i went on a whole monologue carrie popped in for a little bit which was good i was just talking about when dr pepper came out to eat with us at big ed's oh my god and i uh, forgot about that <laughs> well and and i'll i don't know you probably already mentioned this but just to set it up so we're going out to eat for who it was somebody's birthday wasn't it or we were getting all together to do something i don't think it was carrie's birthday well, we were all getting together, so it's the full family. Four, you, yeah, four something. 
Yeah. And then, so it's you, my sister, Lindsay, and then Carrie, and I'm going through the process of getting on the show and my yeah. family doesn't necessarily believe me because I've tried out for other TV shows, like game type shows and stuff, never a relationship one. And then all of a sudden I say, yeah, so there's going to be one of the experts that's going to come to the dinner with us just to observe us. And it was almost like I had the feeling of us being like zoo animals and she's yeah. going to observe us in our natural <laughs> habitat. And if you've ever gone out to dinner or any dinner really with the Hainers, uh, you're guaranteed to talk about uh, going to Poop. the bathroom. Yeah. yeah something. And um, so they're just like, yeah, okay. Someone's coming like, well, who is it? Who's coming? And I say, Dr. Pepper. And we all really, lost our minds. Yeah, we all lost our minds. And then so she came in and Dr. Pepper actually ruined the all you can eat ribs because you're not allowed to share yeah. the all you can eat ribs. And she actually wanted to eat some. So we're sitting there and yeah, so that was the first taste of uh getting on just me i don't even know if that was filmed it was just meeting with the experts yeah it was just a, i went through the whole shebang up to the wedding and all that and uh how i said that i admittedly so was probably the most resistant to jamie in the situation when it actually first happened what was that what was the friction that you two got in <sighs> i wouldn't say there was necessarily friction i think we were i didn't and this is completely 100% on me, I didn't appreciate the seriousness that you guys both brought to the table. I still kind of thought it was a joke. Not a joke, but like I thought it was like, all right, you guys are on TV. Like, I get it. Like, you know, and she was wanting to be, you know, accepted part of the family and everything. And obviously she completely is now. We love her. Yeah. I don't know. You know, you're my older brother yeah. coming into our shit. You know, well, was like, I, I had like your with- back, you know. Yeah. Well, it was like with mom, like mom gets very protective. And for whatever reason, Jamie still feels like mom gave her a hard time when as much as I tell her, like, no, I I know my family and I know my mom, my brother, my sister, like you have these feelings and they're valid feelings, but I'm telling you, it's not the reality. It's not what you're imagining in your head. They, they didn't dislike you. They were cautious, obviously, because you know, there, but it wasn't like they were giving you a hard time on purpose. No, listen, and and your viewers or your listeners, whatever, we're the most accepting family on the face of the planet. The ongoing joke when we go out (laughs) is, oh, mom, you're going to invite them to Thanksgiving dinner? Like it could be anybody. Um, So I don't think it was resistant in who is this girl coming into our lives and let's protect that. It was more like, I, you know, it's unconventional well, and yeah. uh, you know, it, it we're it going backwards weird. here. Yeah. We're going weird. backwards. You, you're, yeah. you have to start a relationship at the point of marriage and then, you know, get to know the person and right. anybody that's ever married, like you marry the family also, you know what I mean? Yeah. And well, I'll, I'll tell you what though, to Jamie's credit, she hung in there. Not that we gave her so much crap, she is a very strong-willed individual, very confident, whether that's true yeah. or not. But I also, think she's a very confident. Also insecure, though. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell that. But uh, I've always said it. You guys are the most consistent. It's just easy. And, and you know, once I think we got past the weirdness, yeah. uh, it's been great, you know? Or thinking that it was a joke. Yeah, like thinking like, all right, no, this is actually a serious relationship now. You know what I mean? I think even mom said that too. She said, uh, you know, are you guys just together for show business? (laughs) We're like, yeah, no, we're really married and we're really going to work on this. But yeah, everything kind of repaired itself through there. And the hardest part was that going from being a tight family of five to all of a sudden I'm getting married and nobody knows this person And, you know, the thought with Jamie being on The Bachelor was, you know, we don't know if, and this was my concern, we don't know if she's just doing this for TV. Well, that's the other thing, right? So I'm glad you brought that up. So that was, that was what did it for me, where it's like, you know, this girl was on The Bachelor a couple of times. She was on The Bachelor in Paradise. Like, she's a reality TV person, you know, and that's okay, you know, Mm -hmm. but my hesitancy was, okay, well, you don't have to sell me the the story, right? Like. Mm -hmm. You guys do what you want. And then once once you get to know Jamie, she's like the most kind-hearted, like, she's always thinking about other people. Always, always trying to make other people comfortable. Like, couldn't be happier with her being my sister-in-law. Yeah. So I think all of our listeners want to know why Carrie did not come to the wedding. 
<laughs> I kid you not, dude. We were Harry literally. Matt is Matt's wife. Uh, my wonderful wife. She was just one. on camera. <laughs> only one that didn't come to the wedding. So, and the ongoing joke of the family is that she was against everything. And it's so funny. Like I said, we were literally just telling this whole story to this uh, couple we were hanging out with at the beach. It was one of her friend's little sister who they were super tight growing up. We had a wedding that she couldn't go. And uh, so she had to go to the, to the shower. And with this whole thing, she was just like, you know, we didn't know if it was serious or what the hell the thing was obviously yeah. i wasn't gonna miss it because yeah, uh, like yeah that that's like the greatest thing i was ever a part of so yeah. funny so many so laughs what, from that day what was the most awkward moment that you saw from your perspective because oh, man i'm trying to think back seven years and you know the only thing that i remember is what they showed on tv where it was like you said wow she's way <laughs> yeah she's way pretty i was like look at this freaking kid you know life on a silver freaking platter <laughs> The most awkward, I would say, and you know us, we thrive in awkward. Love it. Um, was probably outside of Kyle, <laughs> flipping out about everything. My cousin Kyle. Yes. <laughs> it was probably when I, like, the whole, I guess, ceremony, like, everybody that was there could feel that she was not into it at all. <laughs> And I think you see it on all of our faces. There's this, uh, a shot of you guys, and then all of us in the background were all like, "Yeah, what was <laughs> when she was sort of because like I was just I was in La La Land. I just yeah, when well, you were you know, sweating like, like a yeah, banshee. Yeah, I was just drenched, and I didn't know until people told me that she was like crying um, under the table and just well, like, in the hallways. If you, if you remember, Lindsay did the recon. So my Lindsay, sister, Lindsay. Lindsay, the conniving bee that she is, uh, she she was going into the bathroom and kind of like following Jamie and her sisters around and would come and report back to us. And uh, I remember at one point she came up to me and you, because you were telling me to bounce Kyle out. <laughs> and she kept it coming up and she kept going, um, Doug, stop rubbing her back. <laughs> I do remember rubbing, that. Stop, stop rubbing, rubbing her back. I remember Lindsay coming up and saying, stop rubbing her back and also stop calling her your wife. Your wife. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. But yeah. you have to think about it. Like from our perspective, again, we didn't know if this was serious, if this was a reality thing, if you were going to be into it, if she was going to be into it. Like, yeah, we didn't know. The hardest part was really not having any other show to base it off of. Like now families yeah. can go back and watch other Married at First Sight series well, dude, and, and get a honestly, sense of what's going to happen. But in there's my, no preparing for the first season. Yeah. And I almost think that that made it helped. Yeah. It, it made it cooler, 100%. you know, because now it's like you see you and Jamie got a little bit of fame. Courtney got a little bit of fame with um, that wrestler dude. And it's like, People see, oh, I could do this. And like, I think the genuineness kind of fades away. After, you know what I mean? Like, you have yeah. to think about people's intentions. Do they want to just be on TV? Do they, you, you know? And I think the first season, there was probably a little bit of that, but you probably had the strongest connections too. They just filmed everything. They didn't even know what was going to stick on TV or whatever. Yeah. Like they, they really didn't know what was going to catch on. And all of a sudden, FYI, network becomes like a thing and you know they, yeah. they keep growing but skipping from our marriage i i wrote some notes down just because jamie wanted me to ask you if there's any embarrassing stories of me growing up that you know of Ooh. uh am i allowed you said that you've peed the bed on air so we can we can speak no, freely I've never said that yes you have so doug was a bed wetter <laughs> um, till, till about I, 12 I think that, uh, an embarrassing story is that one time – I forgot where we were going, but we were road tripping it somewhere, and uh, I made you laugh real hard, and you peed your pants. Yeah. But you were, like, older. <laughs> you were, like, 12 or 13. This was like, yesterday. Yeah. That was a pretty good one. <laughs> embarrassing? Yeah. Oh, man. I feel like there's been so many. I feel like I've had more of the embarrassing stuff happen. Lindsay, think- for sure. Yeah, I think our age gap, a lot of the embarrassing stuff I think I, I did with my friends. Yeah. Um, and, like, I think you were just young. I just yeah, followed but, along with everybody. Yeah, but bedwetting is certainly uh, one. I 
couldn't sleep over people's houses. You know what, though? You're an anomaly, though. Like, you don't get embarrassed. It's something I admire about you. <laughs> I, I got a good one. I hope you come back because I just remembered a good one. We just lost power for a second. This is what happens when you're trying to do with two kids and a thunderstorm. Jamie's away in LA, so this is why it's kind of like a haphazard type of recording and podcast because um, I have both kids. We didn't have time to podcast before Jamie actually had to go away to film unfiltered, so I'm trying to rush all of this, and that's what's happening. Oh, hey. Go ahead and tell your story. I was going to talk about that one time we picked you up from Bar A and you threw up and pooped yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot <laughs> about that one. That was uh, that was the first time that I ever had uh, Red Bull and vodka for the whole night. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that was miserable. That was absolutely Red- miserable. But yeah, I know that you have to go. So I want to thank you and I love you. And yeah. And that's my brother, Matt. Ladies and gentlemen, the youngest child, um, the one that got all the hand-me-downs. And yeah, so anybody that didn't know this in the past, I was a bedwetter until 12, 13 maybe. Um, I've had a few accidents here and there, but yeah. I don't know how you grow out of being a bedwetter. I never really thought of that. But anyway, loved having him on. If there's anybody else in in our family that maybe you guys would want to hear from, my parents I know have been on, my sister, Jamie's side of the family, let us know. Subscribe to our podcast to stay up to date with everything. So at Hot Marriage Cool Parents, you could even find us on Instagram, along with the reviews that we like to give a shout out on. We're going to start to select some of your voice memos that you guys have emailed over to us. So if anybody is new or if you haven't yet, you can take a voice memo on your phone, record yourself with a question, any question, nothing is off the table, can be about anything, show related, personal, whatever you need. And we're going to start to play some of your questions on the podcast and actually answer them. So you can take a voice memo on your phone. You can email that voice memo to team Jamie at jamieotis.com. And we hope to play all your questions on there and have a discussion about it. So stay tuned for next week. We have another great episode coming up. A lot of information that we are going to get to. Jamie will be back for the next one. We love you and goodbye.